Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video. Today I'm going to read the lowest rated books on my Goodreads TBR. If you want to watch a similar video, I posted a reading vlog of me reading the highest rated books on my Goodreads TBR last week. So that will be linked in this corner and also in the description below so you can check that out if you want to. So when I did this for the highest rated books, I had an idea of what books I would find at the top of my shelf. Because I kind of knew what books are popular right now, I knew what books are well loved on my TBR shelf, but I don't know the lowest rated books. So last time I tried to guess what books I would find. So I'm gonna do it the same way this time. Okay, so two books that I don't hear a lot of is Rebel of the Sands by Alwyn Hamilton, which I have right here on my shelf and also Truth Witch which I have down there by Susan Denard. Like I don't think these are on the bottom but I haven't seen them up there on my shelf so that's my best guess. Rebel of the Sands or Truth Witch. And if I am correct, I am not mad at reading those or these books because I like them. I like the look of them. I like the sound of them. So I'm gonna start right away with an according of my iPad. I am checking this real time so you guys will get my reaction right now. Anyway, I'm going to find Goodreads. This is kind of nerve-wracking. I'm going into my want to read shelf and it's ranked by average rating. But now we're going to click reverse. So here are the highest rated books on my shelf and you will see in that other vlog which of these these books I read. Okay, but anyway, click the verse. Do I want another guess? Do I have another guess? Maybe the queen of the cheerling is down there. I'm just picking up books that I haven't heard about in a while. <laughs> you can probably tell. And also, you'll probably see here on this Goodreads shelf that I have a mixed bag. I have a mixed bag of books I have on my shelf that I want to read and books that I don't own that I want to read. I'm gonna check now and I'm gonna I'm just gonna check, okay? One, two, three. Okay, We Were Restless Things, which I don't own. I am holding up my hand, by the way, but you can probably see everything. Lakewood, and then Chenman of Ravens, Horrid, Mixing on Gothic, A Deal with uh, the Elf King, A Witch Doesn't Burn, this one. Pillow Thoughts, which I do own and haven't read. And I have decided I am not going to read any poetry collections for this video or these kinds of videos because I don't want to sit and read a poetry collection from back to back. I like to read them at different times when I feel like it. So, and all of these right here, which I just mentioned, from We Were Restless Things to A Witch Doesn't Burn in this one, those are all books I don't own. But okay, the first one that I see that I own is Truth Witch by Susan Denard. And this book has an average rating on Goodreads of 3.84. I have been wanting to read this book for ages. I remember very clearly being very new to booktube and this series was one of the first series that I saw here on booktube because maybe this was in like 2016, 17, I was watching a lot of backlisted YouTube videos from the biggest creators on this platform. This is one of my oldest books, which I have had for a long time. This was published in 2015, so I maybe heard about it in 2016, 17. These were just one of those YA fantasy series that I just heard a lot about, or maybe I just heard it from one person, but that was enough for me. Anyway, Truth Witch by Susan Denard. This is about... Okay, so this takes place in the Witchlands. I am reading from the book right now because I don't remember a thing about this book really. This follows a character, a witch, who can tell when people is telling a lie or when they are telling the truth. So this is about her and another witch who is a thread witch and she can see invisible lines that connect other people's lives to each other. And there's a war and there's maybe some romance. I'm hoping there's romance. I don't know. I, I don't know what to expect from this book. Anyways, okay, I'm gonna continue right now. Truth Witch, a princess saves herself in this one. To sleep in a sea of stars, I don't own. Uh, then I have A Touch of Ruin by Scarlet St. Clair, I don't own that. Ooh. Oh my, okay. Among the Bees and Briars, Get a Life Chloe Brown, uh, Out of Darkness. Then I have Watch Over Me by Nina Lacour. And then I have Rebel of the Sands, which I did predict, and it's still in the like top three worst rated books that I own. But Watch Over Me by Nina Lacour, I'm gonna get it. Watch Over Me by Nina Lacour. Man, I am actually really shocked by seeing Nina Lacour's book so low. I'm just gonna continue checking here and then it just goes on and on with books that I don't own. What the hell? I'm not mad. I know I seem mad, but I'm not mad, but I'm really, really shocked because I think this is going to be a great book. And I don't think I mentioned, but I'm only reading two books for this video. I only read two books for that other video. But this is about a girl with a traumatic past. I don't know if she is running away from her past or if she just wants a new start. But anyway, she gets to a farm and on this farm, there's like ghosts. And this is said to be beautifully written and a beautiful story about grief, connection and love and growth, maybe. I don't know. I'm really shocked 
but I am really excited to be reading this book because it is a bit shorter. I don't want to spoil myself right now, but it is a bit shorter. I don't know how many pages. Ooh. 261 pages. That, you guys, is not a lot of pages. This is a big book, by the way. Like, it's as big as my head. I have a big head. Well, no, I don't really, but this is a big book. I actually think that I'm going to start with Watch Over Me by Nina Lacour because it's such a short book. And right now I am a little bit in of a reading slump, you could say. So I just think a shorter book should be great for me at this time. And I actually think that I will start this today. Okay, so I'm gonna stop talking now and I will see you guys again when I have probably finished this book. It's Friday and I finished the book. I finished it this morning, but I don't know what to think of this book because it was it was weird. Just to speak a little bit more of the context of the book or the beginning of the book because I didn't know what the hell I was going into. But I was right about Mila, the main character, going to this farm and it's all about her healing process. But she goes to this farm that is run by two adults who have adopted a lot of people in the past and they have people working on this farm that is all a part of this family. Everyone on this farm has gone through some shit in their lives. This is literally a healing farm. You go there and heal. And the ghost. I talked about me not knowing if there was a literal ghost, but there are literal ghosts in this. And I was confused when they were talking about the ghost because no one seemed to really care that there were ghosts. No one seemed to be afraid of the ghosts. No one seemed shocked that there was even ghosts there. And we get a little bit of backstory from Mila's point of view. But like, they don't talk about the ghosts. And when they do, they talk about it like it's just normal people in their backyard, like glowing normal people. So the ghost aspect of this book didn't do anything for me. It was just weird. And this was a very short book. And that wasn't really it for me. I didn't really have time to get connected with the main character. And by the end of it, I didn't really care for anyone except one of the boys that Mila ends up teaching on this school or this farm. He was so sweet and I loved his character. And that was probably the greatest thing about this book. But like, I don't know what this book tried to do. Like we follow Mila. She is at a very broken place where when she gets to this farm and we follow her as she heals on this farm with the help of the people there and the ghosts. But in the end, it didn't feel satisfactory for me. I think that has to do with that I didn't feel connected with the character and I didn't really see the steps that clearly that Mila took to heal herself. Like I couldn't pinpoint what moments where she showed growth, I couldn't pinpoint moments where she got better at dealing with her past and this book flew through so fast that I couldn't even remember what the hell I was reading. Like. 10 pages ago. Like, I remember the overall plot of this book, but I don't remember why it should feel important to me. The things I did like was her relationship with her newfound family, except for the other two teenagers that are interns on this farm. They're not part of the family in that sense that they are adopted by the two adults, but they are teachers and they help on the farm and they are very much still part of the family. In that sense. I didn't understand her relationship with those two. Like there was a lot of weird scenes between the three of them. So they had a very weird relationship in my opinion and I didn't really like it. And first I thought that this weird relationship was going to turn out into a ro romantic relationship between the three of them because they were very close. But the two other people were in a romantic relationship already and that was just a weird dynamic I guess. Maybe for some people that isn't weird but for me that just made this book even weirder because I couldn't understand their relationship and I couldn't see what where it was going because Mila talks about them being friends all the three of them but she also feels jealous that the other two have a romantic relationship that she isn't a part of so I couldn't understand their relationship and I couldn't really understand what this book tried to say so now I don't know what rating I'm going to give this book because of course it's not a five star I didn't really like this book it's not a four star it's not even a three star to be honest I think I'm going to give this book two stars I don't even feel bad that I'm giving it two stars to be honest I'm just really sad that I didn't enjoy this so for this experiment that I'm doing right now with this video it turns out that I'm with the majority here and I'm one of those that didn't really like this book that much. But with that said, I still have another book to read for this video and I'm really glad that I read Watch Over Me in just three days because now that means that I have more time to read Truth Witch by Susan Donard. So I wanted to have started reading this before I filmed this clip, but time is running out and I have to film this before I begin school. But I wanted to have read at least the first chapter so I would have something to talk about from this book as well because right now I don't know much. So right now I have like 
30 minutes before my class starts to read and I'm going to read the first chapter of Truth Witch and then I'm going to probably update you guys after the first or second chapter what my first initial thoughts are. Anyway, I'm gonna go read now and I'll update you guys later this day. Okay, I'm hoping this won't be too shaky, but it's a couple of hours later and I only read two chapters. I really wanted to read three, but I didn't really have time because I had school and for school I'm reading another book, which I thought I could just say a couple of things about because this is a book channel after all. This is Normal People by Sally Rooney and I am 278 pages into the book. I have about 50 pages left. I could finish this today, but like I have three or four more weeks to finish this book. I'm actually really enjoying this so far and I'm finding it quite hard to read it as well because I can see myself in this book. Like I can relate to some of the stuff discussed in this book with mental health and the relationship in this book, I can really relate to that. The overarching relationship in this book. And you know, I'm almost finished with this book and everything just seems to go worse and worse the more I read it. So I don't know where the hell this book is going, but I'm actually enjoying it. And this is probably the first time I'm reading a book for school that I'm actually enjoying. So I just wanted to talk about this on my YouTube channel. I'm going to talk about it in a wrap up, but like I just thought that I could update you guys on what I have been reading for the past two hours when I had this lesson. Enough about that book. I read, like I said, two chapters in Truth Witch by Susan Denard and I'm happy to say that I'm really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying Safi and what's the other character's name? Safi and Isolde. They're both different witches and I really like their dynamic and their thread sisters. Like I'm thinking they're soul sisters. Just another word made to fit into this fantasy world. You can really see that they are best friends as well as they are kind of sisters. They have a really fun dynamic between each other and they are very different and it was just really fun. And then, because I couldn't make myself not to, I checked on um, chapter 4 and chapter 4 is from a different point of view. So that means we are getting much more point of view because we are getting Safi's point of view, Isolde's point of view and then this other point of view, which I'm just really excited about. So. So far, so good. It's really like action-packed straight from the beginning. We are thrown into a scene and we get a little bit of backstory in the first chapter of what has happened, but we don't get backstory on the characters or the world really, which is great. But we got backstory on how these two characters ended up in the place that they ended up in, in the beginning of the book. I'm really excited to be reading this book and I'm hoping I'm going to love it. That is all I have to say about this book so far. I'm enjoying it, I'm enjoying their dynamics. And I will talk to you guys again when I have gotten halfway through the book. I am 50% into this book. I'm on page 222. I'm loving this book so freaking much. I really love Susan Zanar's writing style. I like how action-packed it is, how fast-paced it is, and like how filled with emotion and description as well as like action. So we follow four main characters. I talked about in the beginning when I just read like two uh, chapters that we had gotten two and was about to get three point of views. But now we have four point of views and I think that each and every point of view brings something new to the story and a new perspective. Each point of view is so distinctively different but like I love every single one of them and I can't wait because I don't know but Susan the Nerd seems to be setting up some romantic relationships in this book between two of our main cast. So we begin this book following Safia and Safia and this other male character. There is some potential romantic feelings to between those two and I can't wait for that to happen. And then I have some inkling or some hopes for the following books to be about Isolde and a possible love interest for her because there is another main character in this book, the fourth POV. He is so damn interesting and I just hope those two get together. That's all I'm hoping. Like right now there's not really like any points towards that but I just... I just want that, you know. I hope there's enemies to lovers in the next books and I hope there's like opening up and like discovering new feelings because Isolde is, has grown up with these people which is called Nomatsis and she has grown up with her mother which always pressured her to not show any emotion like these people, the Nomatsi people, are supposed to not like have emotions or I don't know if that's the whole people or if that's just 
the thread witches but anyway she has grown up with this really harsh mother like there's some tough love here and so she has a hard time like showing emotion so i'm hoping fingers crossed that in the next books or in this book that Isolde is going to open up and maybe find love and why i love this book so much is because one the characters and the writing and it feels like old school ya but this is what i love this is what i need this reminds me of sarah j mass the throne of glass series that typical ya the kiss of deception by mary pearson and it's just like it's like coming home. Like YA nowadays is so different and I love YA sometimes for those reasons that it is really different. The tone is different. The newer YA fantasies has been really evolutional. Revolutional in like the diversity and the inclusiveness. <laughs> Can you say that? <laughs> Inclusivity? I don't know if that's even a word. What I mean is new YA is way more inclusive than older YA. With that said, I do think that some authors is really inclusive in their old YA books. I think this book, for example, Truth Witch, we have a lot of different countries, a lot of different characters from different parts of the world with different heritage, different backgrounds, and none are quite the same. And then there are some YA that is just a full white cast with no diversity, no inclusivity, inclusiveness. I'm really enjoying this. This is everything I want from a YA. The only thing I'm missing right now is romance, but I feel like that's coming. And I feel like this romance is going to be written well, because other YA fantasies I've read in, like, the past year with romance, I didn't care about that romance. There's a lot of tension between the characters, and I really feel for Isolt and Safia being thread sisters and, like, best friends. You really see that they care for each other so much and would die for each other, and I really enjoy that about this. Because I feel like a lot of YA, there's always people against each other all the time and i haven't read in quite a while about two friends like best friends soulmates or thread sisters in this case just working together at all times and being friends and staying together because they know that they will always have their back i don't know i was supposed to keep this short but here i am i have been filming for 20 minutes but anyway i'm loving this book so far and i don't know if i'm putting too high expectations right now but i really want to love it So I'm really sorry if you can hear my computer working right now, but I'm overloading my computer with videos right now because I needed to transport them from my phone because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to film this. But okay, now I'm going to talk about Truth Witch. So I finished this a couple days ago and the clips that you just saw in this vlog were from the weekend where I had actually already finished this. I finished it in the beginning of the weekend, but it was this long weekend because of Easter. And I just filmed some clips from Easter and my celebration with my family. And it was actually really nice to just hang out and relax. And I didn't have any books to film for, or I didn't have any books to read for any video. So I didn't have any pressure that way. So it was just really nice nice. Okay, so I think we're all good with the computer, but anyway, I finished Truth Witch and I honestly loved this book so damn much. <laughs> I am giving this five stars. This made me feel so nostalgic and I loved the feeling that this book gave me. And it just has this vibe about it. I mentioned Throne of Glass before, I think I mentioned The Remnant Chronicles. This felt like that and I honestly love it so much. I love the characters so much. There is four main characters, I've talked about this before. I love Safi and Isolt, they're like being BFF soul sister relationship. I absolutely love that. And I really liked how important friends were in this book because we follow another main character, Merrick. He's like captain of this ship and he's also like a prince. And he also had a thread brother, similar to a thread sister, like a soul sister. Like I really enjoyed that part of this book. That you can have thread brothers or thread sisters and you would die for each other. And there's such a strong friendship there. And then I liked all the little plot points and plot twists that made all the characters interconnected with each other and I'm really looking forward to see how the relationships play out in the next book. Like you could read this as a standalone but in the end of this book there's so many little threads not tied in. Like with the relationships for example. 
I think there's a lot of things going to happen in the next one that somehow connects the characters again. And then there's this overarching plot of this bad guy and this war, as well as from Isolde's side, she has like connections, family connections and where she grew up. And I also think that that is going to be a bigger part of the following books. Her relationship with her town or her settlement where she came from and the other Nomadsi people. And I think that that is something that Susan Donard set up with in this book and is going to evolve a lot more in the following books. I honestly think that this as the first book in a fantasy series that came out in 20 2015 is better than Throne of Glass, the first two novels. I didn't like Throne of Glass, the first two books in that series. I'm not here to compare but I, I just think that's better, I don't know. But with that said, I am really in this fantasy mood, this YA 2015-2012 mood, so I'm actually beginning a reread of Throne of Glass, the whole series, and I'm actually currently reading The Assassin's Blade, which is the bind up of like five novellas or four novellas from Selena's point of view before Throne of Glass happened. I'm on the third novella right now and I am enjoying it. I don't really like the assassin part of Throne of Glass. I like the fey part of it, the magical part of it, but I'm really excited to get to that part and reread a series that I loved growing up. So with that said, I think this is quite a mixed bag. And if you watch my other part of this series, which is when I read the highest rated books on my Goodreads, you will see that it's kind of a mixed bag there too. So I didn't like this one. I thought it was weird. I didn't really get what this book was trying to do. It was really short. It didn't have an impact on me. And two stars. And then this one, which was lower on my Goodreads TBR than that one. I'm giving this five stars. I'm so glad that this video ended up resulting in a five star read for me and a book which made me so happy and made me want to continue with the series. So as a conclusion, it's a mixed bag. I'm really happy that I have found a series that it will hopefully become one of my favorite series of like all time and I just really enjoyed this experiment reading these two books and as an ending and a conclusion to this video maybe you shouldn't trust Goodreads ratings, average ratings of the lowest books on your TBR because I think you should read them anyway because this video made me read a book that I wouldn't have picked up in a long time that I really really loved and maybe that will happen for you too so let me know in the comments if you have read any books lately that has a really low average rating on goodreads but you ended up loving and also i know this book isn't part of this video but i think normal people which i talked about a little bit i think in the beginning of this video normal people doesn't have a very high goodreads rating i think it has like 3.5 or something but i love this book if you follow me on goodreads you might have seen my short little or instagram you might have seen my short little review on this book i absolutely love this book i gave it five stars so even though this book Book wasn't part of this video in that way that Goodreads picked this book for me. I still read it during this video and I loved it. I gave it five stars. So if you haven't watched the other part of this series where I read the highest rated books on my Goodreads TBR then I will link that in this corner and also in the description because you know it's the same kind of setup. It's the same kind of vibe so if you like this video please check that out and leave a like, a comment and subscribe to my channel because I post a new video every week every Thursday. So again Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!